Scientists working at CERN have discovered an elusive new subatomic particle that has never been seen before as they work to unlock the building blocks of the universe. These new particles are known as neutrinos, and they were discovered for the first time inside an atom smasher. So what exactly are these particles, and how were they discovered? Let's find out. The Higgs boson particle, which has earned its nickname the God Particle, was discovered 10 years ago by a team running the largest particle collider in the world. This discovery, which holds the key to understanding the origin of the universe, made history. But shortly after that, the collider was shut down and has undergone several phases of upgrades. Now, after more than a three-year break for improvements and upgrades, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, or CERN, has resumed data collection on the Large Hadron Collider. This time, the mission is to prove the existence of another mysterious substance, dark matter. What exactly is the Large Hadron Collider? The Large Hadron Collider, LHC, is the largest and most powerful particle accelerator in the world. It became operational on September 10, 2008, and it continues to be the latest element of the CERN Accelerator Complex. LHC is made up of a 27-kilometer ring of superconducting magnets and other accelerating elements that serve to increase the energy of the particles as they travel through the device. Inside the accelerator, two high-energy particle beams travel at close to the speed of light before they are made to collide. The beams go in opposing directions through separate beam pipes, two tubes that are kept at an incredibly high vacuum. A powerful magnetic field that is maintained by superconducting electromagnets is used to guide them around the accelerator ring. Scientists use the LHC to verify theoretical predictions in particle physics, particularly those associated with the standard model. While the standard model can explain almost all particle physics discoveries, numerous questions still remain unanswered, including the nature of dark matter and dark energy. Why does matter outnumber antimatter? The LHC is designed to help solve such puzzles. The batch of LHC collisions seen at CERN between 2010 and 2013 provided proof of the existence of the long-sought Higgs boson particle, which, together with its associated energy field, is assumed to have been crucial in the development of the universe following the Big Bang 13.7 billion years ago. But now, Scientists are hoping to take a further step forward and prove the existence of dark matter. In view of this, the LHC was restarted and something new was discovered. The LHC is extremely expensive to maintain. However, it has more than proved its worth to the scientific society by helping to discover strange particles. And one such particle is called neutrinos. The groundbreaking discovery, achieved by CERN's forward search experiment, Phaser Group, and published in the journal Physical Review D on November 24, 2021, represents the first time neutrinos have been detected inside any particle accelerator, not just the Large Hadron Collider. The discovery offers scientists with a brand new perspective to investigate the subatomic universe. So what exactly are neutrinos? And why all the fuss about them? Neutrinos are elusive subatomic particles created by a variety of nuclear reactions. Their name, which translates to little neutral one, alludes to the fact that they are electrically neutral. Neutrinos only interact with two of the universe's four fundamental forces, gravity and the weak force, which is responsible for atom disintegration. Because neutrinos have almost no mass, they fly through space at almost the speed of light. A few hundredths of a second after the Big Bang, thousands of neutrinos were produced, and new neutrinos are constantly being created, including those produced by supernova explosions, particle accelerators, Earth's atomic reactors, stars' nuclear cores, and radioactive decay of materials. According to physicist Karsten Heger of Yale University in New Haven, Connecticut, this means that the universe has a billion times more neutrinos than protons on average. Now, the weird thing about them is that, even though they are so abundant, they hardly ever react with any other particle. Neutrinos are everywhere, but due to their difficulties in detection, physicists are usually unaware of them. Neutrinos hardly ever interact with anything else in the cosmos, passing through most stuff like light beams through a clear window. For example, 
your body is currently being penetrated by approximately 100 billion neutrinos per square centimeter, but you won't feel a thing. First, neutrinos were thought to offer a solution to a scientific mystery known as the beta decay phenomenon, in which an atom's nucleus spontaneously produces an electron. Some scientists in the late 1800s were perplexed by the beta decay phenomenon, but to no avail. The phenomenon appeared to violate two fundamental physical laws, energy conservation and momentum conservation. In addition, the proton appeared to have slightly inadequate energy in beta decay, remaining stationary rather than being knocked in the opposite direction as the electron. It wasn't until 1930 that scientist Wolfgang Pauli proposed that an extra particle might be escaping from the nucleus, carrying the missing energy and momentum with it. Pauli reportedly said, I have done a terrible thing. I have postulated a particle that cannot be detected to a friend. He was commenting on the fact that his hypothesized neutrino was so ghostly that it would rarely interact with anything and would have little to no mass. Physicists Clyde Cowan and Frederick Rhines built and installed a neutrino detector outside the nuclear reactor at the South Carolina Nuclear Savannah River Power Station more than 25 years later. In order to let Pauli know that their experiment had managed to capture some of the hundreds of billions of neutrinos that were escaping from the reactor, Cowan and Rains enthusiastically wrote him a telegram. Because of this discovery, Rains went on to earn the Nobel Prize in Physics after Cowan passed away in 1995. However, neutrinos have consistently co-founded scientists' expectations since then. The sun emits massive numbers of neutrinos, and these neutrinos bombard the Earth. In the middle of the 20th century, researchers built detectors to look for these neutrinos, but their experiments constantly revealed a discrepancy, with only about one-third of the expected neutrinos found. As a result, it was assumed that astronomers' models of the sun were wrong, or that something strange was happening. Eventually, scientists realized that neutrinos have three distinct flavors, or kinds. In addition to the electron neutrino, which is the most common neutrino, there are two other flavors, muon neutrinos and tau neutrinos. Neutrinos bounce between these three types as they travel between the sun and our planet, which explains why those early experiments, which were only looking for one flavor, consistently missed two-thirds of their entire quantity. However, contrary to past theories that neutrinos were massless, only particles with mass can experience this oscillation. We do know the specific masses of all three neutrinos, but experiments have shown that the heaviest must be at least 0.0000059 times lighter than the mass of an electron. Now, how exactly do scientists find a particle as elusive as this? A particle traveling faster than light through a light-slowed substance like water produces a faint blue glow in its path, just as a jet traveling faster than sound makes a sonic boom. By scanning for this glow, scientists can discover the trails of particle byproducts left behind when neutrinos strike an atomic nucleus directly. However, despite the fact that such studies are good for identifying the signs of neutrinos that travel through Earth from the Sun, scientists still know very little about the types of high-energy neutrinos produced when particles collide within particle accelerators. To look for these homegrown neutrinos, the researchers at the Phaser Corporation developed a brand new detector called the Phaser Nu. The Phaser Nu is built of solid metal plates of lead and tungsten with many layers of light-detecting emulsion in between. The neutrinos will first collide with the atomic nuclei in the dense metal plates, producing particle byproducts. The subsequent phase is the emulsion, which acts identically to conventional photographic film. The emulsion reacts with the neutrino leftovers, imprinting the tracing contours of the particles as they pass through it. The scientists then built the emulsion to study the neutrino particle tracks. Physicists can use the data to prove that these particles created some of the markings. This method even allows scientists to distinguish between the three forms of neutrinos that have been found. This proved not only that the scientists had chosen the best place within their massive 17 mile or 27 kilometer ring to look for neutrinos, but also that their new detector was capable of doing so. Now that they have a functional detector, the physicists are working on a larger version 
that they promise will be far more sensitive to detecting elusive particles and will be able to differentiate between neutrinos and their antimatter counterparts, antineutrinos. So, are neutrinos dark matter? Neutrinos are the foremost candidate in the hot dark matter theory, but only if their rest mass is greater than zero. Neutrinos interact only through the weak force and gravity, which explains why dark matter, unlike baryonic, normal matter, cannot be identified by interactions with light. There are also so many neutrinos that even if they had just one-fifth the mass of an electron, the total mass of all neutrinos in the universe could compensate for the missing matter. So what do you think about this new discovery? Let us know in the comment section.